Victoria's Secret is facing, though, now a big lawsuit this morning. A lingerie designer claiming the chain stole her design. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has that story. They're some of the world's most famous figures, the body of an angel. But one lingerie designer is suing the mega chain for allegedly stealing her body of work. Deborah McKinnon, who runs New Jersey intimate apparel company Zephyrs, claims Victoria's Secret is selling a knockoff version of her push-up inserts. The kidney-shaped silicone insert is anatomically correct and creates lift and cleavage while maintaining a natural appearance underneath clothing. She's saying that what they have in the stores is just completely her idea completely her design. McKinnon telling ABC News, I have put a lot of time, work, energy, and investment into my designs and unique inventions, and I just want to protect my intellectual property. In her complaint filed Monday, McKinnon says she got the idea for the bra insert in January of 2008 after 20 mock-up attempts. She then pitched her product to Victoria's Secret, telling the mega chain she was applying for a patent but would give the company exclusive licensing rights if they came to an agreement. According to the complaint, McKinnon claims she sold tens of thousands of her inserts to the company from 2011 to 2012 until Victoria's Secret decided to terminate their agreement and began making lower quality knockoffs. This specific case is a classic David and Goliath story where you have a, uh, an entrepreneur and you have a large uh, U.S. conglomerate corporation. Well, we're joined now by Rebecca, and we also have Shark Tank's Damon John. He's in Orlando on tour for his new book, The Power of Broke, which, by the way, just hit the New York Times bestseller list. Hey! Well deserved. Thank you. All right, Damon, we want to know, what, what could Deborah have done to protect herself? First of all, she should have had a non-disclosure agreement that's called the NDA when mm -hmm. she goes and shops it to all these brands and that basically procures or saves the fact that she's not going to be able to get knocked off because they signed an agreement. And I don't, I, she should have walked in there with a provisional patent at least and that holds her place for that patent for that bra for about a year until she comes out with the actual product. But because she didn't do that is, you know, what chances does she have at winning this? Uh, very little because you know what? They probably didn't want to sign an NDA because they probably get, uh, you know, pitch bras all the time. They probably have a staff of 200 people developing bras, and there's going to be a push up bra in the system. So uh, they probably didn't want to sign that, so she probably decided to hold the meetings regardless. David, what suggestions do you have? Because you have people who come on your show, they've got these great concepts, products, and that, and you know they go to bigger places, and how do they protect yeah. themselves? Well, first of all, they have to trademark the name, they have to trademark the concept. If there's a design patent, they have to also copyright the design patent. And they should go out and get a provisional patent so it holds their place in line as they develop their product. They can't just walk into a company, a big company like that, and just say, hey, take a look at this. It could have been a designer in a whole nother department that right. reviewed that bra two years later and yeah. said, oh, I came up with the idea. The, the, the head of the company may not even know. But is there somewhere you can't, I'm sorry, is there somewhere you can go? Because I know so many people, they, they, I, they, they have these ideas. Yeah, mm -hmm. they don't know what, where to go. Is there somewhere they can money, go? too. Yeah. yeah, well, of course you can go to an attorney, which I highly suggest, but a UST, uh, United States trademark, yeah, USTPO. USPTO. Yeah, USPTO. That's my dyslexia kicking in. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where you would go. Then that is the government site to show patents and trademarks. And you could do that by yourself. And what's well, it's USPTO.gov. And what's great about this site is they actually have a section. So we think about the cost of doing these things. Mm -hmm. You hear a lawyer, you think that's going to cost me. Right. They actually have a part of their site where you can ask for pro bono help. That means free help from a free attorney that has been doing these things, that's been looking at patents, that knows exactly what you need to put into your patent in order for it to really oh, have weight and resources. have teeth. Who pays oh, for the attorney? Yeah, I suggest the you government. go to an attorney, but whatever <laughs> happened to back in the days when we just went to the library and we <laughs> figured out how to do it ourselves and save $20,000. Right. That's right. All right. All right. Very important advice there. Damon, thank you so much. Congratulations again. And Rebecca, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.